PC, accounting for your future. Hi, this is Dave from APC and we're going to look at the P7 Advanced Audits and Assurance. Uh, I mean, one of the topical issues that might come up in the exam is the current issue question. And, uh, <coughs> I mean, on your ACCA Global website, the particular article related to the current issue and that's related to the quality control uh, I mean, as a separate article on the ACCA website, so I do think that it will pop up in the upcoming sitting. So that's the reason why you're gonna have to be careful about that. So, with regards to quality control, what do I mean by that? Is where we, from an auditor's perspective, is where we're gonna control the quality of the audit assurance engagement or non-audit assurance engagement, whatever you like, really. So, what we are gonna do is we're gonna focus upon the audit side. Is where we're going to minimise the audit risk. So, quality control is where we're going to minimise the audit risk or minimise the risk of giving a wrong audit opinion. So that's the reason why we are going to do things correctly. So we're going to avoid giving a wrong opinion to a client and being sued to by the client's company. So I do think one of the uh, uh, topics that's related to current issue is you are going to link that to the auditor's liability. So auditor's liability, I said to you in the class, uh, the auditor will suffer the liability if they know who will use the service, for example, who will use the audit reports to make their investment decisions. And uh, the auditor... has done a bad job, which means do not stick to the international standards and auditing to do the work. As a result of that, that particular someone, for example the investor, will suffer a loss as a result from relying on our opinion. As a result of it, auditor would bear his liability. So that's one example related to quality control. And within the article, what the examiner told you is that first of all, how are we going to make sure that the quality control or QC is good. I mean, another example would be, uh, I mean, another topic related to quality control you can think about is the money laundering issues. Of course, from the, uh, um, I mean, accounting's perspective, we have to make sure that we maintain the accounting record, and from the auditor's perspective, we have to make sure before uh, providing service to a client's company, we have to check. Uh, is uh, shareholders register, directors register, passport, telephone number, etc. Making, making sure that we have done the uh, pre-appointment checks of the client's complaint. But here's the thing. How are we going to make sure that quality control is good? Of course, we're going to detail that from the firm's perspective and from the individual engagement's perspective as well. Yeah. So you all know my mnemonic is called RADAR. If you don't know that, please go back to the uh, pre-recorded videos to study that again. So individual engagement, PPPDDD, for example, planning of the audits, making sure you identify the risks correctly. So that would be very, very important. Now, of course, the quality control will be can be related to the audit risk equation talking about the inherent risk etc. So one of the examples that is laid out in the article is that the um, when we are auditing a fair value, the work performed onto the fair value of the client's company's financial statement is not a sufficient quality simply because the fair value, uh, you have to use quite a lot to his judgment but if the auditor is not competent, you cannot exercise the judgment correctly. So, R the D, for example, the delegation of the work based upon the experience, qualification of the auditors, and that have been examined again and again in the uh, exam. Uh, you can refer to past exam papers. Also, another D would be uh, referring to the documentation of the work, etc. So, you have to document your work, and that will be uh, very, very important as well. So that's the quality control, and within the article, uh, what, what is very, very important is I do think the examiner may uh, set a 
small parts of the requirements, for example, within the question 3 or question 4 of question 5 is the part C or part B uh, of the question. With regards to the practical examples of the coin controls, how are we going to be tested? So, if you take a look at the articles itself, uh, in the second half of the page of the article, I mean, the, you should go to the. Uh, I mean, the ACCA has changed their website. It's quite a beautiful website now, and you can uh, click on past exam papers or maybe ACCA qualifications in the bottom of the page, so you can see this article by selecting the technical articles from the P7 exam. So the article says why the audit quality a concern. There will be particularly uh, ex uh, reasons for that. First of all, the competence of the auditor. It's highlighted that the auditor is not that competent because you haven't got the knowledge, you haven't got the skills, you haven't got the qualification, so you cannot uh, identify those risks correctly. And this will increase the detection risk, which is stated in the uh, uh, audit, audit risk equation, isn't it? So one of the ways that you are going to improve the quality of the audit is you're going to improve the competence of the auditors by studying hard, etc. And that would be very, very important. Of course, competence, uh, uh, you can lay that to the ethics part of your knowledge. Because within the ethics, uh, according to the IFAC code of ethics, auditors have to be competent and sticking to the standard when doing the work so that they will finish off, finish off the work within the time period, okay, within the time deadline. So that's the first one. Second one, ethical dilemmas. So, so what does this actually mean is, for example, if the auditor is providing the audit and non-audit service to a client's company, and this will increase quite a lot of these threats to objectivity of the auditor. One of the threats will be the familiarity threat or self-review threat. So, if there's a self-review threat or familiarity threat, of course, the auditor and auditing the client's company will lose professional scepticism when they're auditing the client's company. As a result of it, uh, they will not check the client's company in much more detail. So, hence, this will increase the detection risk to the auditor and hence increase the audit risk as a result. Another example would be the exercise of the judgment. For example, when you're auditing the fair value uh, financial instrument, if you haven't got enough knowledge, etc., of course, you cannot audit those uh, uh, I mean, uh, figures correctly. And you don't know whether, not the, uh, whether the figures, for example, the fair value has three levels according to the IFRS number 13. Uh, you don't know whether or not it's correct or wrong. Uh, so that will um, decrease the audit quality if you don't know whether or not that will be right or wrong. And a sensible way that you can do, particularly if you're a small firm, uh, is you are going to uh, use the work of the expert. So when using the work of the expert, you have to ask yourself a question, whether or not you should rely on his work. So whether or not you should rely on his work, you need to do is you are going to question the way that they that they do the work and whether or not their quality control within their firm or within their company is good. So this will link to another ISA ISA forty using the work of the service organisation again, or maybe um, another ISA related to use the work of the uh, expert. So of course you can link that this this particular topic to quite a lot of this area really. So those are the examples that the examiner has given you and also the example related to the deadlines. So particularly if you are auditing a client's company but the client's company is going to go list it onto the stock exchange and will allow your audit firm to finish off the audit ASAP. So instead of finish off, finish off the uh, audit work within three months but now you only got one month to finish that. As a result of it, this will increase the detection risk. So one of the sensible ways that you might do is that first of all, you can allocate more resources to this audit engagement if you think that this is profitable. That's sensible, yes? That's okay that you're going to do that. But if not, if you cannot allocate more resources into this audit engagement, rather than finish off, finish off the work in three months, 
you now finish off the work in one month. Of course, you can make, you may consider to resign from the audit team as well. So those are the things that has been examined again and again uh, in the P7 sitting. I hope you enjoyed this lecture and best of luck into your upcoming sitting for your paper P7 exam. Bye. A P C accounting for your future.